So uh, this week I was asked twice, what is it that I love most about the fall season? There's two things that I really, really enjoy. Number one, the change of weather. I'm just loving the cool weather. I'm sleeping at home right now, y'all, with my windows open a little bit. Uh, I got an amen behind me. Um, because I just like for it to be a little bit crisp, you know, when I'm when I'm sleeping. And the second thing is, it's football season. I mean, I just, I love uh, football season. And uh, I know we got a few football fans uh, in the house. Uh, a couple of prayer requests right now for the Ravens. Um, but uh, but I love, I love, I love the weather. I love, I love football season. And I don't know what that may be for you. I don't know what it is that you love about the fall. Maybe it's... Um, the change of season brings the, the, the kinds of drinks that you like. Maybe it's cider or it's, it's hot chocolate or um, pumpkin latte. Uh, I don't drink pumpkin lattes, but I know a lot of people do. Um, but I, maybe, I don't know, it's the color of the fall leaves um, or fire pits. I mean, I love my fire pit that I have at home. Um, but these are things that, you know, we enjoy about this this season. Um one other thing to keep in mind, too, about the fall season is, is the fall is full of festivals and gatherings, uh, different kinds of celebrations, right? I think, I think we love, so we got one amen for celebrations, all right? Um, but speaking of celebrations, I was actually thinking about this. Um, I, I, I found this, this list of uh, celebration songs because there, there are some specific songs that we play um, regularly during uh, times of celebration. And, and there, this list I looked at was like the top like 50 or 60 songs. And, and, and at the top of this list was actually a few songs that I like. And I'm, I'm just going to name off a, a, a few of them. Maybe these are, are songs that you like. Um, one of them is, is my kids, uh, my little kids. One of their favorites, Can't Stop the Feeling, you know, Justin Timberlake. Um, another one, This Is How We Do It. Um, some of us uh, are like that one. Happy by Pharrell, which is part of Despicable Me. But uh, there was a, a number one all-time celebration song that the Library of Congress last year in 2021 um, made a part of the National Recording Registry because it's culturally historically and aesthetically significant. And that song is Celebration by Cool in the Gang. I see some head nods in here. And it's interesting that I see some head nods because that, that song is probably older than the majority of this room, right? <laughs> but uh, when that song comes on, like I, I think probably 100% of us know that song. Celebrate good time, come on. Mm -mm -mm. Look at Jay, I know y'all knew it. I know y'all knew it. We gonna celebrate. <laughs> um, we 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 love these kind of celebration songs. That that's one of uh, uh, maybe I think some of our favorites because good times are things we look forward to, and they produce memories that we reflect on. And I don't know if you know this or not, but actually celebration and reflection is a big theme throughout the Bible. Throughout the scriptures, particularly a big theme in the Old Testament, and God actually gave his people a commandment to celebrate and to have several festivals. As a matter of fact, um, this past week, uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrated uh, Yom Kippur, which is about the Day of Atonement, which is uh, a very, very holy and the holiest of days for our Jewish brothers and sisters. Well, those of us who follow Jesus believe that Jesus ultimately was the one who atoned for all of our sins. In the, in the Hebrew tradition, the, the priest would go into the temple this one time of year, and he would plead to God on behalf of Israel to to wipe away their sins, to wipe the slate clean. Now, this week is also a uh, significant uh, festival and celebration called Sukkot. And that is related to what we call the Festival of Shelters. It's literally starting uh, tomorrow. And this Festival of Shelters celebration 
is to remember God's provision, his guidance, and his willingness to dwell and be with God. Israel, specifically at the time when they were coming out of Egypt, it was a rough time. They were in bondage. God was bringing them out, taking them to a new land, and they were in these temporary dwellings, and so was the presence of God dwelling among them uh, in a temporary place while they were on their way to a new place. And this is where I actually want to put some change in the meter and park today, because I think that this is relevant to our current situation as a church. I think this is relevant to where Hope Baltimore is. As we're coming out of this uh, celebratory time of of celebrating one year uh, as a church, but then uh, uh, announcing that we're actually going to a new place. We've got a, a new situation. And this, this, this merger that is going to happen uh, with our brothers and sisters from um, Epiphany is, 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 is a new thing for us. And generally speaking, regardless of our levels of excitement or maybe even apprehension, change is always hard. And if we're being honest... There's really only one kind of change that we like. It's the kind of change that we choose. We don't really like change being thrust upon us, right? Because the unknown uh, is difficult. It's, it, it's difficult because it's hard to plan, it's hard to predict, and we don't have the control that we would like to have. And so if you have a Bible um, this week, and even if you don't, we won't leave you hanging. We'll have the words up on the screen. We're going to zoom in in the Old Testament book of Ezra. This is a transitional time at the writing of this book for Israel, God's people, who always seem to, throughout the Old Testament, be in a state of transition. And what's also interesting is at the writing uh, of this book, particularly in Ezra 3 where we will land, it is the exact same time of year that we are in right now. So the, the, the absolute exact same time. So we're just going to flash back, hit the rewind button thousands of years to the same exact time that, that we are in right now in terms of the time of year. Ezra is uh, recapping the building of God's temple. And that is significant because the temple, which was in ruins, uh, the the people of God who had been exiled, they had been away from Jerusalem, they're now returning back to Jerusalem and they are rebuilding the temple, which is where the presence of God resided in Jerusalem in the Ark of the Covenant. So this is a significant thing. And I think that there are a couple of relevant takeaways for us that I want to just unpack for us. So we're going to start in verse number one in Ezra three. We'll go through one through five, and then we'll skip down to verse number 11. And we'll have the words up on the screen if you want to follow along. I'm reading from the CSB uh, translation. Here we go. When the seventh month arrived and the Israelites were in their, in their towns, the people gathered as one in Jerusalem. Yeshua, son of Josadak, And his brothers, the priests, along with Zerubbabel, son of uh, Shetiel, and his brothers began to build the altar of Israel's God in order to offer burnt offerings on it. As it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God, they set up an altar on its foundation and offered burnt offerings for the morning and evening on the Lord. I'm sorry, evening on it to the Lord, even though they fear the surrounding peoples. They celebrated the festival of shelters as prescribed and offered burnt offerings each day based on the number of specified number specified by ordinance for each festival day. After that, they offered the regular burnt offering and the offerings for the beginning of each month and for all the Lord's appointed holy occasions, as well as the free will offerings brought to the Lord. Skip down to verse number 11. It says, they sang with praise and thanksgiving to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love to Israel endures forever. 
Then all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the Lord's house had been laid. As we continue in this series that we've been in called We, this weekend I want to just tag our uh, message, We Celebrate, as we talk about how God mandated for his people to celebrate and he gave them festivals to celebrate. In the passage we just read, I think we need just a little bit of context. Ezra, I'm sure, is not a book that we're reading often uh, and we're, 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 we're um, kind of diving into. But here's what I want you to think about. Here, here's the best way that I can help you kind of understand what's happening right here in Ezra. Um, as part of the fall season, uh, particularly uh, football season, uh, we have what's called homecoming season. All right. So so it is homecoming season right now. As a matter of fact, Morgan State uh, University right here in Baltimore had their homecoming this weekend. And a lot of schools around the country are having homecoming, which means that alumni and different people connected to uh, the different universities are, are making a pilgrimage back to a significant place for them, a place to connect with others. And so this is um, homecoming time and people get uh, excited about that. that. That's exactly what's happening here in the book of Ezra, although there's no football. Um, but but they're, they're, they're coming back to the place of Jerusalem. This is a, a transitional time for them because they've been in exile. And so they're making their way back to a place of significance for them. And as part of that significance is this temple that's been in ruins. And Zerubbabel is helping to lead the rebuilding of this temple, which again would house the Lord's presence. And part of what's happening here with this rebuilding is also remembering. And so when you make this trek and you're a part of a university and you come back for homecoming, like, like you are remembering things that happen on campus. You're remembering moments and you're remembering good times and you're, and you're celebrating. And so as they're coming back, they are remembering. This is a time of remembrance for them. And as part of that, they're also celebrating the Festival of Shelters, which literally starts tomorrow on our calendar and goes a week long. It's one of the seven feasts that God gave to Moses in Leviticus 23 and told the people to uh, adhere to. The Festival of Shelters is known as the longest and most joyous and the greatest of all of the feasts. And so with that context, I want to just take the next few moments and unpack a couple of things if you're taking notes um, I want to drill down on. And, and I want to start or build it around just this one particular question. What is the relevance or significance of God instituting celebrations? There is one simple answer. And then there are two reasons connected to that answer. The, the simple answer is this. God wanted Israel, he wanted his people to remember that he was with them. That he was for them. And that the things that he had done on their behalf. He wanted them to remember that. And there are two reasons for that. Number one, he wanted them to, to understand that the things that had happened didn't happen in their own power. It was God who had done it. And the second thing is he wanted them to understand that there are always going to be more problems. So with those two things in mind, let me just, let me just unpack them. Number one, not, not in your own power, right? So, so God wanted Israel to understand that the things that he had done and the doors that he had opened, it, it wasn't in their own power. All of us, if we went around this room, all of us have stories of getting ourselves into situations, not always negative, some positive, you know, doors open. Oh, my God, it's a miracle. I can't believe this happened. Um, and, and some of us have uh, 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 stories of, of, of getting ourselves out of situations. And, and, and a common thing would be, you know what, I really don't know how that happened. All of us have some of those stories where you know that it didn't happen in your own power. 
right? M- mine is uh, that I, that I want to share today is, is literally just coming to this city. And the things that have happened to get me to this point today in this city, I cannot take credit for. There's only one thing that I did, and that was just respond to God saying that Baltimore was the next place that we were supposed to be. And literally, like we came with no real plan. We didn't have a church planning organization that we were connected to. We didn't have any like we didn't have a lot of financing or or, we didn't know what we were doing. And we barely know now. But. God's provision was just crazy. There was a family that was a part of the church that we came from, National Community Church, that that believed in this vision so much. And it's not like we we laid out this huge strategic plan and they committed six figures to this launch. One family. And then we had other uh, things that, 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 that happened, like the neighborhood that we moved into. I didn't want to move into that neighborhood. My wife did, but I didn't. But it was the exact address that we needed to be at because the neighbor behind me was the one who connected me to all of these different people who were doing great things in the city. And one of them was the owner of this building who literally lives houses from me. And there's story after story after story of God's provision that I can't take credit for. It wasn't in my own power. So when I show up here on Sundays and we're doing what we're doing, I know that it was only the hand of God that opened these doors. Listen, the same is true for you. God has provided. He's opened doors. He's closed some doors. He's made exits when you didn't think there was a way out. He's blessed you. And listen, the whole point of the celebration and the festival that that God wanted Israel and his people to honor was to remember what he did and how he was for them. I think it's significant in Ezra 3, in the beginning, that before they even start celebrating they began to rebuild the altar. And this is significant because this is related to remembering that uh, how things happen in our lives is us asking God for help in how God hears. And the festival of the shelters was literally God providing and God dwelling amongst his people. And, and this is part of the reason why we uh, wanted to institute this prayer strategy, because we wanted to uh, build an altar of prayer and we wanted to go before God and ask God to go before us before we take these next moves. Israel had no idea where they were going or what was going to happen. God had to go before them. And not only did he go before them, but he was with them in the process. In verse 11, it says, they sang thanksgiving to the Lord. You are good. You are faithful. Your love endures. I think this is part of the reason why when we fast forward to the New Testament and uh, Paul, the apostle, who helped establish a lot of churches, and he's uh, writing regularly to encourage Jesus followers just like us. He gives this little formula when it comes to to prayer and seeking God uh, in Philippians four four through seven. And I just want to give you this formula. I'm not great at math, um, uh, but 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 I know that this works right here. Um, first, when we pray or when we come before God, we we rejoice. All right, so that's a that's a state of mind. We are. Not to worry, okay, so maybe that should be a minus sign, I don't know, but, uh, but, but, but don't worry, all right, or minus worry, okay, but pray, look at this part, with thanksgiving. That is to be reflective in our prayer, remembering what and celebrating what God has already done. So we rejoice, that's a state of mind, we don't worry, and we pray with thanksgiving. And as a result, it says the peace of God plus protection for our heart and our mind. At the end of the day, that's all we're looking for a lot of times is just peace of mind, right? Well, this is the formula for that. And so here, here, here's, here's, here's what happens, right? God wants us to remember, all right, that 
He is the one that is in control, and that is what brings peace to us, right? Now, one of the reasons that God wants us to to do this is because God knows human nature um, often suffers from what I call BNS. That's a uh, brand newness syndrome, right? You know, you're, if somebody comes up to you and it just and says like you acting brand new, that's not good. All right, that, that 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 that's not. And God knows that human nature, like we have the ability to like try to act like maybe um, it was us that did it, you know, or we want to take credit for things, right? We 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 are misremembering, or or we're not um, giving God the credit for the things that have happened in our lives, lest we forget that our talents, our education, our networks, you know what those things are called? Those are resources. And every resource has a source, and the source is God. So in this season, as we are transitioning and we're moving towards the vision that God has called us to, we want to celebrate what God has provided for us. Maybe it's uncomfortable. Maybe it's a little bit, I, I'm not sure. Uh, but, but we're not doing this on our own. We're following God's lead. So number one, it's not in our own power. The second one is God wants us to understand that, you know, there will always be more problems. There, there are always things that are up ahead. Um, when I was a kid, Maybe like many of you, um, I didn't really celebrate, um, you know, being a kid as much as I should have. You know, I always just wanted to be older or be with the older kids or do what the older kids were doing. You know, like just didn't enjoy the fact that like I'm, I'm, I'm whatever age I am and it's, it's all good. I'll get there one day. Then I became a teenager and um, I didn't really enjoy being a teenager. I, I wanted to have more responsibility and, and, and be an adult and I wanted to do what I wanted to do and I just didn't really enjoy being a teenager. Then I got to college, and, and I really didn't enjoy my college experience. Maybe some of us enjoyed it a little bit too much, um, but, but, but I, was, I was very serious about, you know, my goals and what, and so my whole entire life, I really had a problem with really just being uh, settled and really enjoying the season that I'm in, always looking towards the next season. But, but, but here's the thing, and here's the problem with that. Like, every new season, and brings new problems. Every, the next situation is just going to bring a, a next set of, of things that we've got to confront. And, and, and we're not as good, at least I know I am not, at just pausing in the moment and just taking in where I am. In chapters 1 through 6 of Ezra, they're working to rebuild this temple. But they're doing it in the face of opposition, in the face of threats, and in the face of political maneuvers that are trying to work against what they're doing. Also, the same is happening or happened with uh, Nehemiah in the next book after Ezra, who is facing opposition, uh, rebuilding the city wall. Sometimes just pausing and celebrating in the moment, it just helps us to just take in what is happening before we just move on to the next thing because there's going to be opposition and things that we're going to have to confront as we move forward. And so celebration and remembrance is just about reflecting upon how God has helped us before. I'm going to give you another formula here. So when we, when we have problems, because we're always going to have problems, we should pray. We should, we should bring those things before God. And when we have problems and we bring them before God in prayer, what it does is it helps us to activate or access power that we don't have within ourselves. We can, we can tap into God's power and then we can experience God's provision. Now, unfortunately, the provision is not always how we would like it. You know, God doesn't always follow our notes well. 
He didn't always follow our request well. Uh, but 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 here's the, here's the thing. God is the one who is in control. And he's the one who understands what we need, even though it, we think we need something else. The answer to our problems is not the pursuit of more money. The notorious B.I.G. told us that. More money, more problems, right? The, 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 the answer to our problems is not more control. Putin is showing us that right now. The, the answer to our problems is, is not better policy. We're seeing the breakdown of policy in our country right now. And it's not that those things are bad things because all of those things are, are resources, all right? So, so they're not bad, but they're limited in what they can do. And they all bring with them a new set of problems. So what does a rhythm of celebration do? I'm glad you, you asked me that. Um, I was reading this article uh, in Psychology Today, and it talked about how celebration boosts our well-being, making it easier to manage stress. And then social psychologist Fred Bryant says that celebration helps us to buffer against bad things and build resilience. And so what all of that means is uh, the celebrations don't make the problems go away. It, it's not some sort of force field that keeps problems from finding us. And, and, and it doesn't make us ignore them. But what it does is it gives us retroactive perspective about present challenges. So we're facing a present challenge, but because we are regularly celebrating and reflecting, we're able to face those challenges differently, and we're conditioning ourselves to look back at God's past provision, to boost our optimism as we face opposition. Let me see if I can bring us in for a landing like this. As we step into the unknown, as a church, and maybe as you step into the unknown as an individual, whatever it is that's going on in your individual life, because there are lots of variables, these changes and these transitions are challenging, and they're not easy, and it's hard enough to get a church going and to get momentum over a year and to have the number of people that we have gathered here. Um, it's hard enough to do that. We're not actually trying to make it easy on ourselves by merging with another church. Like that's, that's adding to it a, a another set of variables. But I think it's critical that we pause and we celebrate and we remember that even though we feel good about where we are right now, it wasn't us and our own power that got us to this point. And it won't be ourselves and our own power that will get us to the next place. So what I want to do, I mean, just literally for a couple of minutes, I just, as I was reflecting this week and as I was celebrating, I, I, I just wanted to take a, a few moments um, to just share a few things that I wanted to celebrate. And, and I'm thinking of uh, this, this song that, that Ty Tribbett has, that if he did it before, he'll do it again. Same God right now, same God back then. That, that's, 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 what, that's what I'm feeling this morning. So, so I just got a few just photos that I, I, I just wanted to, to share with you. Some things that, that I'm celebrating. The first one is, you can see behind me, it's just people who were willing to show up wearing masks. And people who were willing to gather and wear masks. And just worship. I mean, that, that's, that's a hurdle. That's a, that's a thing that we had to, to, to try to overcome. But there were people willing to stand outside and hold signs. There were people willing to come indoors and, and sing and high five and whatever their comfort level was. That's something that should be celebrated. I'm thinking uh, in this next photo of, of uh, pastors who came to, to hang out with us. You can see on your left, that's Pastor Luke, 
from Mountain Christian Church um, who came uh, to hang out with us and, and several other pastors. And, and then you see the Boldens uh, as well who are former church planners and, and Wesley who constantly checks in on me and wants to make sure that I'm doing well and, and wants to be a resource to me. Like, that's a blessing that I want to celebrate that there are people for us. And in this, this next photo, just people gathering in the park to eat ice cream on National Ice Cream Day before we were even a church. Just willing to come hang out and just spend time with us. We, we didn't know what this was going to be, but, but there are people who just want to come and just chill. That's, that's something to celebrate it. And as a matter of fact, uh, Zerubbabel, who we, who we talked about, like he challenged the people about despising small beginnings. That's a small beginning, but it's worth celebrating. And then I'm thinking about uh, the environment that our kids team uh, creates upstairs for us. I mean, we pulling curtains and like making it look pretty. And I mean, we don't have 50, 100 kids, but we got kids who want to come and show up because we got a team that created a space for them. That's worth celebrating. And we've got our serve Sundays. Man, I'm so proud of our service. If there's, if there's something that I'm, I'm, I, that's at really like high on the list that I'm proud of, I serve Sundays where we say, hey, we're not going to gather like this. But actually, every time there's a fifth Sunday, we're actually going to take time to serve and invest and bless Baltimore. And so we put together these bikes. And I think those bikes went to a rec center in, in, uh, in, in West Baltimore. Another picture that I just love, one of my favorites, little Olivia playing peekaboo with the photographer. Um, that was actually on our, on our launch Sunday. I know her parents, and they've been friends of mine for a long time. And again, just these little moments. And then the last photo is one of about 150 photos that my friend Josh Peterson just came into the city and just took photos for us and say, hey, man, you can use these for Instagram. You can use these for, you know, whatever things that you need uh, because he's a photographer. That's, that's, that's what he, he's a photographer on the side. He teaches PE, but he loves taking pictures. So he's like, hey, man, I'm going to just come up and just take photos. These are things that are worth celebrating. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't not talk about our leaders and our serve team members, and all of you who financially invest, and Derek Chase, who is my neighbor, who lets us use this space, my family, who puts up with me, and, you know, shows up regularly, every week, well, at least almost every week, I mean, we're busy. We got, it's the family of six. We got a lot of stuff going on. I'm grateful for everything that we have experienced. And I'm excited about what's next. But I, I want I will be remiss if I didn't point this out. I know that we celebrate what's new or what's ahead but we also lament what was and what has been. And so if you read verses 12 and 13, which I'll read for you, we didn't read it in the passage, but I just want to read for you. So after, after, they, after there was a shout of praise, it says, but many of the older priests, Levites, and family heads who had seen the first temple, they wept loudly when they saw the foundation of this temple. But many others shouted joyfully, the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shouting from that of the weeping because the people were shouting so loudly and the sound was heard far away. Listen, as we celebrate this next season, it's okay to lament this season. It's okay to feel some sort of way. You need space for that. We all need space for that. And there may be some of us who 
are having a little bit harder time celebrating. Or it might just take us a little bit of time to, to get on the, the joy train. But, but here's what I want you to know. Just, just know that we're not celebrating accomplishments or milestones. And we're not comparing what is to what will be. Or what was to what might not be. We're celebrating God's presence and his provision that we believe goes with us. And here's the thing. He never promised us that everything would be okay. He just promised us that we would be okay because he would be with us. He has promised and demonstrated that he's with us no matter what. And that is the confidence that we move forward in and that is the basis and the foundation of our celebration. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for... Thank you for showing us in the scriptures that we need to regularly celebrate, regularly be grateful, regularly have thanksgiving in our hearts. Regularly remembering how you have intervened in our lives, the things that we take for granted. We thank you for those things and we celebrate how you are for us. And we believe that just like you led us to this point, just like you led Israel out and into the promised land you will lead us as we are joining our brothers and sisters from Epiphany that you would do the same these things we ask in your son Jesus name Amen <laughs>